Immediately at the start of this video, we're straight into some really great looking effects here. These are ink drop transitions. We've looked at these in the past and I have a tutorial on how to make these, which I'll link to in the description below. And Ben's used these in previous videos, but he's just taken this to the next level by adding a 3D camera over the top and animating it as it flies through. Now I've linked to Ben TK's India video in the description below and I highly recommend going and checking that out first before you dive into the breakdown. So you see what Ben's doing here by layering up the different ink drop transitions over the top of each other to reveal the different images that he has for his scene. He's then basically pre-comped those, put them in a 3D space by creating a 3D camera and then he's moving the camera around to create this really interesting opening animation for his video. I love the little touch of detail that he's added in here by creating a mask over the top of this eye and by adding this little symbol or image over the top, he's then added a bit of a glow effect over the top of that and this is really well done. Now Ben is really talented when it comes to the storytelling aspect of his videos. In particular, he creates a theme for each video and then builds on that through all of his shots and effects. So in particular, you can see he's using this energy effect of this lightning bolt or electricity that's wrapping around the stick as it moves up. And I'd say that this is most likely done in using something like Particular or the Red Giant products. This would be very difficult to do if you didn't have a plugin to help you do this but even still not to take away from the amount of work it would take to get the results that he has. And after watching a lot of his videos, I've noticed the attention to detail that he puts into all of these little effects to really build them up and really help tell the story. He's also added some little particle effects of the dirt flying out here from underneath the stick as it's sort of frozen in time. And I love this shot here, how the camera's moving forward and then you get all these particles sort of flying at the camera as it's flying by. It's just, the attention to detail is what really is impressive in this video. Now, if you like these video breakdowns and you wanna learn more about how these content creators create these sort of videos and effects, I cover all of this in my Motion Effects Pro course and you can check that out in the description below. Packed with over 50 videos, I show you more in-depth breakdowns on how the top creators go about creating video effects for their videos. I show you step-by-step -step tutorials on the techniques that you need to know when creating video effects. I also give you tips and techniques on how you can look at other people's effects and break them down yourself so that you go about replicating those video effects in your videos. So if you want to know how to create video effects like these, or you're struggling with learning After Effects, then this course has been created specifically for you. Now, if you have any questions about this course, feel free to hit me up on Instagram. A lot of you already have by using direct message, and I love to just chat about any of the questions you might have or the types of videos that you're working on yourself. We have another great little setup here for the next scene where he's got a series of quick shots. We've got rain falling in the background and we have these lightning bolts. It could be real, but I'd say most likely the, the lightning bolts have been added digitally, but the rain could be real as well. You can see how inconsistent the rain is, and that's something that's really hard to replicate with rain because digital rain, generally it all falls at the same and you don't really get bunching where more water's falling in one area. It's generally pretty uniform across the shot. Here we can see how uneven the rain is falling. We're getting a big bunching effect over here with less rain falling over here. It could be digital, but I would say that that's probably real, that rain. He's done a really unique little transition. This one in particular really stood out to me when I watched the video. I love simple effects, something that is really, you don't see that often. People try and go overboard on the effects. And this is just something very basic and simple. It really just shows how creative these guys are in the effects they're making. So he's got one shot here of this hand where he's obviously masked that hand out and then he's animated those layers by duplicating them and then animating them flying back into that original position. You also see this same technique when you see videos of where people are frozen in time and they're walking through a shot and then when they interact with that still frame, it then disappears as they go on to the next one. 
it's using a very similar technique. You basically cut that person out, you freeze frame it, and then you can either track it into the scene or like this, you could just animate them flying in with a bit of motion blur over the top. And as the last one's flying in, we then get a really nice transition into that next shot. This to me is Ben TK's signature move where he speed ramps the camera very quickly through a scene and then transitions into the next shot. So we have one transition here into this shot where he's moving the camera very quickly on a gimbal in front of this vehicle. Then he's created this really clever mask here over this dust cloud where then it transitions into that shot. It's just done really well, it looks really clean. We have another series of those speed rampings. He's the only guy that I see do this really, really well. He just has had a lot of practice doing it and he's really good at it. This is another really impressive scene change here where he has the camera fly into a book and then we have all of the different layers animating up. Now he's done similar effects in other videos before where he animates the layers on, where he's exaggerating this by flying into the book first and then having all of the layers open up. I've had a few of you ask questions about this particular effect from previous videos he's done where he's animated the layers popping up. So let's jump over to After Effects and I'll give you a very quick demonstration on how you could replicate this yourself. Over in my main composition, I have all of my layers laid out in the timeline. And all I've simply done is I've selected my clip here. I've just created a new composition. And what I've done is come up here with the pen tool and started to break it down into as many sections as I can. So the key here is to break it down into foreground elements first, slowly building into the background elements. So as I create one foreground element here, what I can do is I can make this 3D. I'm going to move my anchor point down here because we want it to rotate up onto the screen. So I'm going to center this down here. I'm also going to right click and create a new camera. Now the camera can be whatever setting you like. I've just set mine at 35 millimeters. And what I've done here is I've just come down to the position properties and under the orientation, I've hit W on my keyboard to bring up the rotation properties. And then I've rotated it here on the X axis. So I created a orientation keyframe here and then rotated it up to be flat on the screen. Now what I've done is I've just sped these keyframes up. I've given them some easy ease just to help soften that animation. I also added some motion blur here. And once one layer was animated in, then I just grabbed my next layer and kept animating the next one on top. So if I quickly have a look at this composition here, you can see I've broken it down into all these different layers where you can see I've drawn the masks and those layers basically then animate on one after the other. Another cool effect I've done here is by selecting a part in the middle of my shot, you can see where it has no background behind it. And then I've slowly animated the background in around that. So this is the basic technique that I was using to make this effect. The other thing I did was over in After Effects, I then pre-comped that whole composition and I added, if I come down here to the position property, I then added a wiggle expression by simply just alt clicking on the position property. I then type out wiggle open bracket then I type out a number comma 10 close bracket. Now with that first number selected, I then pick whipped that part to a slider control that I've added to the effects control. So I got this slider by coming up to effect down to expression controls and adding the slider control here. And what the slider allows you to do is control the amount of the wiggle expression by creating keyframes. So I want it to be really animated at the start and then basically dissipate down to nothing. So you can see that's what I've done here. I've created a bunch of keyframes that have higher numbers at the start and slowly go down to zero. And it just gives a little bit of that camera shake at the start. I'm also making a video where we're gonna talk about all different types of camera shake, how you can make it, and how you can make your own realistic camera shake using your own camera. The other little scene I wanted to show you out of this video is this little montage here of these shots where the camera is warping from one shot to the next. You can replicate a similar effect by using the warp tool inside of After Effects 
and then it'll help give you that wavy effect. You could also use a displacement map if you wanted something a bit more with hard edges, but the wave warp would be probably an easy way to replicate it. We have these two cricket shots here that have been blended together as the kid's hitting the ball. Then the camera then zooms in to reveal or follow that ball as it's flying through the air. Now an easy way to recreate the tennis ball would just be to film the tennis ball on a green screen by spinning it around and then just removing the green screen and then you have a ball that's moving around. Here he's done a bit of a digital zoom into the sky and he's got some digital elements in behind it looks like some clouds or something like that to show the path of the ball as it's flying through the air. We then have a reverse shot flying backwards through this hall. He's then animated that tennis ball bouncing around the hallway, which is a great touch and tying those two shots together with a common element. So he's using the tennis ball to tie two separate shots together. Another great level of detail here is he's added that glow effect to the eye here of this person. And that's just a really great little touch. It just helps sell the overall effect and adds a lot of realism to it. So I hope you got something out of this video. If you like this video, you can give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more of this type of content, then click on this playlist here on the side of the screen that will show you a bunch of videos that are very similar to this one. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.